Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as a one-hand mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Working on a Sears Craftsman tractor. It, the customer says he cannot get it to run. And this is, uh, I haven't even touched this yet. I just want to show you how to uh, diagnose a no-start condition. And every tractor is going to be a little bit different. Okay, so the tools we need today, I'm going to use the uh, clip fastener removal tool. This is good for taking the spark plug boots off. Two 7 16 wrenches for the help of the battery terminals. A 3 8 extension, 3 8 ratchet. This is a spark plug socket that we need today. It's a 5 8 uh, It's a long spark. This is actually a design. This is a spark plug socket. So it's a 5 8 socket. You can use a regular 5 8 socket, but that's designed for a spark plug. It actually holds a spark plug inside it. We have a multimeter. I'm going to have a link in the description below if you'd like to. This is a, a nice one. I, I like this one. It's not expensive and it works great. Um, compression tester, you probably don't have one, but if you do, it's a, a way to check the compression. Inline spark tester and a 12 volt light tester. But we'll see. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to check one, you want to check your oil right off the bat because you don't want to be trying to crank an engine over if it doesn't have any oil in it. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. This is a single cylinder 20 horsepower engine. This uh, it is only going to be compatible with the uh, single cylinder Briggs and Stratton 20 horsepower out there as far as starting. I'm sure it's going to, as far as diagnosing, it's going to go uh, over a lot of engines, but this is just uh, the one that we're working on here today is a single cylinder, so it's only going to have one spark plug. Let's check the oil here. Okay, so the oil is between the dots. It's a little on the low side, and it is actually very dark. It needs to be changed, but at least we know it has oil. Next thing you want to do is check to make sure we have fuel, and it looks like we have enough fuel to run. It's definitely got some debris in there as far as uh, where the inlet is down there. Next thing I want to do is check our battery. Let me see if this thing will actually crank. Um, going back to the battery real quick. One thing you want to do is check your terminals for tightness. Make sure they're tight and clean. Actually, that's a little bit on the loose side. Oh, and this one's a little bit loose here. So we're going to go ahead and tighten them up a little bit. And this is going to be 7 16th wrench. Most of these are 7 16th. Some of them can be metric. Some of them can be 3 8 These guys here are 7 16th, and we're just going to tighten these up. They don't look corroded, but they definitely are a little bit on the loose side. And you can use a multimeter to check your volts, but you can't really check the amperage coming out of it with a multimeter, which means I've seen batteries that actually had showed 12 volts, but they still didn't crank. You would need a load tester for that. But as far as uh, another thing you could do is you could use a, you can use a light tester, put on negative there. And if you have a very bright light like this, that usually is a good sign and it's staying very bright. The multimeter will tell you the voltage, and I would definitely recommend you could check that before you crank it. Even though we did use the uh, we did use the light and it's very bright, we're going to go ahead and check the voltage at the battery. You're going to put your meter on DC volts, and this one's showing 12.09. So hopefully, between the very bright light and it has 12 volts, that this thing will crank. If it doesn't crank, then we obviously have another problem going on. Let's see the cranks break on. Okay, it does crank. Very, uh, battery's going low now. All right, so the battery's low. We're gonna have to put the battery on charge, or if you have a jumper pack, you can also try that. Okay, so I have a battery charge on it right now. We do have the brake in, so we don't need to be sitting on the tractor to actually crank it over. So I just want to get that juiced up. Okay, so the next thing that you can try by hand is check your compression. Unless you have a compression tester, um, you, to check the compression now, we could have valve issues if we have poor compression. Um, let's turn this over by hand, and it should be easy until you get to the compression stroke and then it should get really hard like this. Like this one right now, I can barely turn this thing over by hand, which means we do have compression because it's gonna be easy until you get to the compression stroke and we're definitely, we have compression. The other thing you can use is a compression tester and sometimes that will not even show the whole truth. If you have a valve problem underneath here is your valves, uh, you can usually they pop and miss and it's horrible and they'll try to start but this thing is just cranking and not starting at all I mean, it's cranking just fine and not starting. 
Okay, so another thing we can check is the electronic fuel shutoff if the engine has one. So if you look underneath the carburetor, this is your carburetor right here. This is where your fuel comes into the carburetor. This is a electronic fuel shutoff solenoid underneath this one. And, and sometimes these connections will go bad or the solenoid itself will get stuck. And you can check that by using your test light. And you're gonna pull this off here. Sometimes they're a little tricky. And now it's two wires. Normally, the black wire and the gray wire. And uh, this one looks like it's got possibly two gray wires. All right, so one of them is going to be hot and one of them is going to be ground. And you can just test, test them both. All right, so what you have to do is make sure your brake is on. Make sure that you have, it, you have the brake on so you can actually start this while you're not sitting on tractor. Turn the key into the on position. Your ignition key into the on position. And then take your test light and you're going to check both of these holes, both of these contactors. And okay, so we have power to it. Now, the air, you, as long as you know you have power to the solenoid, that's one, one good thing. So we're gonna reconnect it now. Now, the other thing we can do is, if you listen to this, you can hear it click on and off. So I'm gonna turn the key on and off. I'm gonna see if you can listen, if you can hear this. And obviously it's clicking on and off. You can hear that. So I know that works. Now the other thing you can do, if you do not hear this clicking on and off, then you're gonna use a, usually it's a half inch wrench or a 7 16 wrench. And you can unscrew this from the bowl of the carburetor. You take this out and then you'll see a plunger in there. And I don't have one to show you, but there's a plunger that goes up and down. That plunger could be stuck or this could be bad. So. We know that this is working because we can hear it click back and forth. It's just moving a plunger inside up and down. It's magnetic. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, so we go, as far as the next step I wanna do, it does crank, but it doesn't start. So the next step I would definitely wanna check is the spark. And obviously if you watch my videos, I love this tool for getting the spark plug boot off these. And I would suggest first we take the hood off. So we're gonna unplug the lights, take this hood off. Spark plug is right here, and this guy right here is nice. If you pull on the boot really hard and it doesn't come off, sometimes or not the boot. If you pull on the wire really hard and it and it just it holds the metal tab in there, it can actually you can pull it off the spark plug wire, and then the metal tab from this wire will be on the spark plug when you actually get it off. So it's it's good if you use something and pry just pry back on the uh, actually get in there. Pry the booty off just like so and then that metal part that's inside here sometimes that metal part right there will actually stick to the spark plug and it'll stay on there if you're just pulling it from the wire so just be careful when you pull this off your spark plug that you do not leave that behind because once that happens it's real hard to get this all back together again it looks like he put a new spark plug in there let's take that out actually we don't have to take it out because we're going to check spark so our spark tester here you can get that at any automotive. I'm going to put a link to the description for all the tools that I'm using today. So you can uh, just click on the link and it'll probably throw you through an Amazon affiliate that I use. Just going to click that on like that. The other part goes into the booty like there. And we'll see if we have spark. You just want to crank it over. All right, so we have spark. And I'm gonna pull this spark plug out and see what the spark plug looks like. Okay, let's see what we got here. It looks like it's a fairly new spark plug from the outside looking at it. All right, well, it's obviously not a new spark plug and by looks of all that carbon that's in there, it looks like he may have a blown head gasket, but that would not stop this from running unless all this carbon that has built up has now fouled this plug because by us cranking earlier it looks like it was definitely getting fuel let's just try a new spark plug okay so i have a new spark plug here i use a ngk product uh they're pretty nice it's a cs6 and these are pre-gapped to thirty thousandths. it's just the equivalent of an rc12yc but i like the ngk product i'm gonna go ahead and put that in 
And be careful with your spark plugs. If you have a brand new spark plug, try not to drop it. It's not good for the spark plug. Snug it up. Crush washer. Now let's see if we'll run. Okay, so from square one to right now, this one was not that difficult, but it was a, it was a little bit of a process to figure it out. So basically you have to go through the steps to diagnose it. And just like I said, you check the oil, you check the fuel, check to make sure you have battery. Now this one, this one did crank over. So it was actually a, how to, you know, how to diagnose a crank, but no start condition. This one was fairly easy. This one was just a spark plug. Now it also has other problems being that we saw all the carbon from that spark plug. So I'm going to suggest to the customer, he may have a, a blown head gasket. He's going to have to keep an eye on that. And I have a, I'll put a link in the description. If you have a spark plug that looks extremely dark and is carbonated like that, I would definitely uh, check out my other one. And if you're blowing white smoke when you're operating your machine after it gets warmed up, um, check that video out. It'll be in the link in the description below. Um, that pretty much sums it up. This was uh, not too bad of a, a no start condition, but we got it going for him. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.